I started secondary school in a different country to this one. I was in the United Arab Emirates, where Dubai is, for instance. I went to school in Dubai, and I had quite a sheltered life while I was there. My life consisted of basically school and video games at that point. Uh, I worked really hard on doing the best I could at my homework. Uh, an average day for me would have been wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, two hours bus journey to school, which was not pleasant. School through until 3 p.m., two hours back, then at least two hours of homework before I video gamed and then slept. And that was about it. And the vast majority was just work. And during that period, I hated music. I despised it. On the bus, every day, there would be some kid that would come up to the front and ask the driver, oh, can we put on a tape? And he'd be like, yes, we can. And <laughs> not really racist, that's actually his accent. So they'd put on this freaking tape every time and it would be loads of different types of music, which I think might attribute to why I have such a variety of uh, music tastes at the moment. But at the time, I just despised it, the fact that I would have to endure a lot of rap, like, <laughs> It's quite funny that I'm a rapper now, but I would have to endure a lot of rap, like I remember a lot of Dr. Dre on there. Um, I didn't know who it was. I actually heard a lot of Eminem and thought he was black, so that was quite interesting. And I always used to think, like, why is there so much swearing? There's no point in this. These guys are just, they're unintelligent. They can't think of any interesting words to use, so they have to resort to that. And that was, that was the mindset I was in. I remember coming home from school um, one day and hearing on the bus Song 2 by Blur and thinking, I, I came home and complained to my mom specifically, oh, they have this one line where they say, it isn't easy, but nothing it is. Oh, that doesn't even rhyme. I was quite sheltered and worked really hard on my academia, doing really well in school, getting high grades. I remember getting 97.5% in a history test and being disappointed with that. I felt I deserved the 100%. So that, that was how pedantic I got. That's 12 year old Dave. And I remember thinking that these kind of artistic pursuits like music and art, uh, were pointless. They were a waste of time and humanity should be focusing its efforts on science and on business and um, doing things that are worthwhile, says the kid that was playing a ton of video games at the time. But recognising hypocrisy isn't particularly the strong suit of a 12 year old. So I'm gonna let that one slide. Hating music, loving science. And I wanted to be some kind of a scientist or billionaire or something like this that would change the world in a grand way through things that mattered. And then I came back to England, where things got real. I was a little bit more um, naive than the kids that were in my school, in quite a few ways. Like uh, my friend from primary school, Alex, showed me around um, the school quad and he was saying, oh, this is where everyone plays Pokemon cards. And I was like, oh yeah, that's my kind of thing. And he kind of gave me that look and was like, yeah, that's more for year sevens you know, the, the lowest year, and so I was like, oh. Like, I was doing quite well, like, for instance, there was this science test where the teacher was like, oh, it doesn't matter if you don't do too well, I know you've just joined the school, and, you know, we'll see how you do, and I got the highest mark in the test. I kind of got this reputation for being the smart kid. So when I had the French lesson, and the teacher asked me a word, what, what it was in French, and I replied, and I got it wrong, one of the kids, being a bit jovial, was like, oh, not so smart now, are you? And it wasn't actually mean, which is quite surprising, because kids can be pretty mean at that age. He was just being friendly. And I cried at that. I cried, because I was the smart kid, and if I didn't have that, what did I have? You know, that was the only thing that mattered to me. And that was the kind of a growing up period, those next few years, where I started to become a bit more worldly wise. Not massively, but a little bit. And there was this one point around the middle of my school life, about year nine, year 10. I had this eureka moment where I was sitting in the quad and I was sitting at this bench and I looked to my left and I looked at all of these kids and I thought, I don't care about any of them. And it was kind of a nihilist moment and quite selfish, but it wasn't really an emo kind of thing. Like, I never had a proper emo phase. I am disappointingly thin on the ground when it comes to embarrassing MySpace photos. Actually, there's a few. But it was more logical, like, I, I, I felt everything was entirely pointless. And that was a kind of a reset point. And since then, I've gained more of an appreciation for other people. I'm not quite that selfish anymore. But that kind of led me on to thinking that maybe there was no things that were better than other things, like intrinsically, like art was not below science or anything like that. And it was around that time that my friends and I would uh, stay in the library and go on the computers and just look at these silly internet animations, uh, flash animations by people like um, Joel Veitch, who ran, 
still runs, I think, rathergood.com, and Mr. Weeble, who I've done a song with now. He did a Badger, 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 and uh, Weeble and Bob, and those kinds of things. But yeah, did a song with him, which is freaking cool as hell, Childhood Hero. Um, link in the description or there. We used to really get inspired by this, and so we started making our own. I stole Flash from school and installed it on my computer at home, and I started teaching myself through the help files and what I found on the internet, and trial and error, really, lots of terrible, terrible things made. That kind of started me off being a bit more creative rather than purely academic. And I, as I was ignoring school, I would have way more time to just make things and try new ideas and teach myself things, importantly, which I think is the most important lesson that you can learn. And it was around then, around the final year of school, that I remember having this very strong feeling of potential. Like, I was thinking about music creation because I just joined a band and we had made songs and we wanted to record them. And I thought, like, I can do this. I can go home and I can get a sound card and I can figure this out. And that's what I did. I, I did my research, I did it on my own. And I was just thinking to myself, like, this whole institution that I've spent the last five, God, 10 years in was entirely pointless. Maybe the first five were useful in like learning to speak and do basic maths, but the, there were so many irrelevant things being told to me that I've, I've never had useful beyond general trivia. I could have been spending that time figuring out what I wanted to do and learning things that were relevant to me and to my career. And that's one thing I despise about school and how no one seems to have figured out, like in government, that it's so irrelevant to the vast majority of people. The only people I think the vast majority of it is relevant to our teachers, which is just a bit pointless. Yeah, I had this very distinctive feeling of potential that I could go out and I could teach myself things and I could figure it out on my own and do whatever I wanted. And I was so frustrated that this was a lesson that was never taught to me in school. So that's what I was like in school. I asked on Facebook what I should vlog about on my new lens. I'm probably moving in and out of the blurriness. I haven't quite got the hang of it yet. It's very shallow. Um, so thanks to this home slice for suggesting that. Oh, and on the last video, I had a bunch of you guys asking where you could get these t-shirts and you can get them in the description on my Boy in a Band store. We've just got some new ones as well. And let me know if you had any similar Eureka kind of moments in school or if you're still in school, let me know what it's like, if things have changed or anything like that. It'd be quite interesting. Cheers for watching and have a nice day. So crisp.